All right, shall we all stand, please, and let us turn our Bibles. Well, let's start from 1 Corinthians chapter 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Let's start from that passage. And then, tutuloy po tayo sa 2 Corinthians. Sabi ko po sa inyo kanina, mula po ngayon, mag-start po ako ng series of messages on family. And we will start from the foundation. And then, marami po ito, mga kapatid. Kaya, sana po ay, kasi, uh, babalik po ako sa pulpito sa pagsasalita patungkol sa family. Sapagkat, uh, maraming beses ko na po na miss yung aking programa dahil lang po sa ating uh, mga activities sa ating mga missions. Okay? I hope you understand that. And I think, mas marami makakapakinig dito kaysa sa programa kasi yung iba kung kunti lamang that you tune in. Alright, let's start from 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and then uh, uh, verse number 9 hanggang verse number uh, 13. Alright, I'll, I'll go to another passage or another book mamaya po. Okay? Now, are you with me now? Verse number 9, for we are laborers together with God. We are God's husbandry. We are God's building. Okay? According to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation. You see that? The, 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 the word lay was already or is already in the past tense. It's already laid. Nandiyan po yung foundation it's given it's already made all right i have laid a foundation and another build it thereon all right sabi ni paul merong nagbi-build na doon or may nag-build na doon sa foundation na yon but sabi niya there is a warning right there which is very important kapatid okay i want you to take note of that so if you have your pen you can you, you can mark it para ma ma makita niyo yung warning after the Apostle Paul laid the foundation. All right? Now, mamaya, maunawaan po natin kung sino yung foundation na ni laid down ni Paul. All right? Are you, are, are you following me? And another built their one. But let, here is the warning. Let every, what? Man take heed how he build it thereupon. Okay? Yan sabi ni Paul, mag-ingat kung paano kayo mag-build sa foundation na yan. I laid the foundation. It's already there. Okay? Now, if you, it just, just, kung nandiyan po kayo sa talata na yan, para hindi na tayo pumunta mamaya doon sa Hebrews chapter 10, uh, chapter 11, verse number 10, may kita niyo po mga kapatid na yung foundation na tinutukoy ni Paul, tandaan po natin na tumawag kay Paul sa gawain, ay walang iba kundi ang Diyos. All right? In the book of Hebrews, the Bible says God is the foundation. He is the builder of life. See? So, ano yung ginawa ni Paul na foundation? Diyos, ang kanyang pundasyon. Alright? Ano yung nilay down ni Paul? Para maunawaan po ang lahat. Okay? Ano yung nilay down ni Paul na foundation? Diyos. He is the builder and the maker. Tandaan niyo po yan. Huwag niyong kakalimutan po yan. Kasi sabi ni Paul, mag-ingat kayo na kung paano kayo tatayo sa pundasyon na yan. So the building now is yours. How you build depends on what is in your mind. It's very important. So the idea of building, the Apostle Paul leaves the idea for us on how to build the building. Or what you are going to build in that foundation. And how are you going to build in that foundation? I hope you're following me. Alright? So, sabi ni Paul, nilagay ko na yung pundasyon, walang iba kundi ang Diyos. So, yung ibig sabihin no, si Paul ay nag-preach patungkol sa Diyos. Si Paul ay nag-preach tungkol sa karakter ng Diyos. Si Paul ay nag-preach tungkol sa kabutihan ng Diyos. Alright? Now, sa iyo lahat yan, kung ang buhay mo, ay itatayo mo sa pundasyon ng lahat ng aking preaching, de maganda ang buhay mo. So, pero kung paano mo itatanggapin yung sinabi ko sa inyo patungkol sa Diyos, nasa sa iyo yun. 
So nakadepende lahat sa iyo ang pagtayo mo sa pundasyon na yun. No, no, one, you know po. All right. And so, and that's sad mga kapatid, na maraming mga nagbibuild na maayos naman yung pundasyon pero marupok yung itinayo. All right. So, now, let, let, let's keep going. Verse number, uh, verse number 11 now. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is, which is Jesus Christ. Okay? Wala na. Wala nang, wala nang hihigit pa sa pundasyon na ito, mga kapatid. This is the best and the strongest foundation in the world. All right? Notice in verse number, number, uh, number 13. Everyone's work shall be made manifest for the day shall declare it because it shall be revealed by fire and the fire shall try everyone's work of what sort it is. All right? Hear me now. So sabi ni Paul, yung pundasyon, all right, hindi kayo nagtayo, makikita mo balang araw kung anong itinayo mo. It shall be revealed by fire or by anything na nakapaligid sa, sa atin mga kapatid. Maring by fire, by wind, by, by disasters or whatever. No? So, marireveal po yan kung anong klase at kung paano ka nagtayo doon sa pundasyon na nilay down ni Paul. Alright? Now, so, the Apostle Paul knew about it. So, he wrote another passage in his second letter to the, to the book of 2 Corinthians. So, he wrote another letter to the to the Corinthians, and that is what we call the second letter of the Apostle Paul to the Corinthians. All right, I hope you're following me. All right, 2 Corinthians chapter 10 now. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. All right, look at verse number 3. So, by yung mabuti po, Ted, yung uh, train of thoughts, yun ang napakahalaga mga po, Ted. All right. Look at verse number three. For though we walk in where the flesh in this life right here, flesh. All right. That is what our eyes is seeing and feeling and everything. No, that's the flesh. In other words, yung puy superficial, yung puy yung nakikita natin ngayon. Now we do not war after the flesh. Sabi niya, kahit nabubuhay tayo sa ganitong klase po umuhay sa ibabaw ng lupang ito, pero this is not our battle. See? Nabubuhay tayo sa physical na ito, pero ang battle natin ay hindi lamang physical. Hindi physical, yan siya sabi ni Paul. So, you see, the Apostle Paul is talking about the main thing here. Para maunawaan natin yung first letter. Alright? So, parang, parang nagtaas yung sinasabi ni Paul. So in other words, in other words, mga kapatid, the foundation that the Apostle Paul was laid is a spiritual foundation. Because life is, cons- I mean, the main thing of our life, mga kapatid, consists of a spiritual matter, not physical matter. Kasi pagka nawala tayo sa physical na ito, buhay pa rin po tayo. So the main thing is a spiritual Alright? So kaya pa ang kapatid, yung nilay down ni Paul na pundasyon ay pundasyon po ng spiritual na may magagawang matindi sa physical na bagay. Alright? Let's keep going. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. You see, I hope you have an idea about carnal weapons. Barrel, bomba, granada lahat, itak, kutsilyo, those are carnal weapons. But sabi ni Paul dito, because we are not in a, in a physical warfare, we are in the spiritual warfare, then sabi ni Paul, our weapons are not made of carnal. Carnal weapons. Kundi ano? Spiritual. But the mighty through God. Look at your Bible. The mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. You see that? Now, if you have your marker, mark the words strongholds. Uh, pulling down of strongholds. You see that? Kapatid, notice what the Bible says. Let's understand carefully here. All right? The Apostle Paul wants us to pull down a stronghold. 
kinakailang meron tayong gigibain, may sisirain tayong stronghold. But this stronghold cannot be destroyed by a carnal weapon. Is everybody at the back understand what I'm saying here? All right, you people upstairs. Okay, so may pinagigiba sa atin si Paul, may pinatatanggal sa atin si Paul, may pinasisira sa atin si Paul. Ano yon? Strongholds. That is in what? What's the form of the word? Plural or singular? Plural. Strongholds. Pero sabi ni Paul, hindi ang kaya na sirain ng carnal weapons. Because in the first place, this is not a carnal battle. This is not a battle of the flesh. This is a spiritual battle. So you cannot use in a spiritual battle a carnal weapon. Very clear, mga I mean, there's nothing deep about this message. All right? Now, let's keep going. Verse number five now. Casting down what? Imaginations. You think when, when you kill somebody, tapos na yung kanyang imaginations? Now, and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. What is that in one word? Give me one word of that. Pride. That's it. So that's it. The, the, the main thing here, kapatid, is pride. All right? It is the very thing that exalted, that is exalting above God. Kaya walang kumikilala sa Diyos kasi ang akala niya, masigit pa siya sa Diyos. Kaya walang gaano nagbabasa ng Biblia kasi masyadong mag, may, may, may tiwala siya sa kanyang sarili kaysa sa Biblia. Now, this, the, here's one thing that I cannot understand, people of God, this morning. Here it is. It's so hard for us to put our trust on God who created the heaven and the earth. Yeah, naniniwala tayo na ang Diyos ang lumikha ng langit at lupa, pero hindi tayo nagtitiwala sa Kanya pagdating sa pamilya. All right? Bakit yung nag-institute, bakit yung nagpasimula ng pamilya ay hindi natin kayang pagkatiwalaan pagdating sa pagmamanage ng pamilya. I hope you're, you, you, you understand now. So I'm just giving you a hint sa lahat ng pag-uusapan po natin. All right? Now let's keep going. Now, sabi ng Biblia, uh, casting down imaginations in every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ and having in a readiness to revenge all this obedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Ang ganda po. So ngayong umaga, pag-uusapan po natin is rebuilding in the foundation. Amen. And a good foundation in a godly foundation. But rebuilding in foundation. Rebuilding. Kaya hindi ko sinasabing rebuilding the foundation because you cannot rebuild. Sabi ni Paul, hindi ka na mag-rebuild ng foundation. Hindi ka na pwedeng mag-gumawa pa ng iba pang pundasyon maliban sa pundasyon ng Diyos. Alright? So ang kinakailangan lang na i-rebuild natin doon sa kung paano tayo nag-build sa foundation na yun. I know some of you, mga kapatid, ah, if not all, I hope, it's not all, mga kapatid. Alam, alam naman po natin na hindi po tayo mabuti na lang itong mga bata na ito na lumaki sa Sunday School. Alam mo po natin kung saan natin, saan nila binibuild ang buhay nila. Pero sa mga nauna na sa kanila, we, we, are, we are to rebuild. Di ba? Kasi mali yung pag-build natin ng buhay natin sa pundasyon. Imagine na niniwala ka sa isang Diyos pero ang buhay mo ay hindi makadiyos. That's why we need to rebuild. Okay? I hope maliwanag po itong usapin po natin ngayon. Alright? Now listen, 
uh, we are warned by God himself. Wrought by Peter. Now, ang sabi ng Biblia, love not, or, uh, by John, I'm sorry, by John. You can find it in John chapter 2, verse number 15 down to verse number 17. Mamaya, babasahin po natin yan. Alright, then turn to it. Pero sinasabi ko lang po sa inyo, we are warned not to love the world. Because the Bible says, what you can find in the world is what? Everything is last. Last of the flesh. Last of the eyes. And then after you last, what your eyes last, you will make pride of it. Because that's, that, that is, pag binasa niyo yung verse, yan po ang katu, kat, kat, kasunod po niyan. Yan ang nakakatakot po dyan. Alright? Okay, so pag yan po ang usapin po natin sa umaga pong ito. Let's bow our heads. Father, thank you for your words. God, please. Alam niyo po na wala po akong magagawa without you. I want to be a blessing to your people. Please make me. Take care of my voice, please. These people need your words, need your message, oh God. So please, use me. And I promise you the glory that I will receive, I will give it back to you for thou art worthy to receive it. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, thank you. You may be seated in the presence of our God. Gusto ko itong sound na ito. Alright? So you see mga kapatid, nakikita niyo po, narinig niyo na mula sa aking uh, introduction mga kapatid, kung paano natin binabay ba ito, the letter, the first letter of the Apostle Paul and the second letter of the Apostle Paul. Now let's go to the book of John. Let's go to the book of John. Alright? Chapter 2 in verse number 15. Alright? John, 1 John, chapter 2, verse number 15. Are you with me? Love not the world. 1 John, chapter 2, verse number 15. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Why is that? Now listen, uh, it's, it's obvious mga kapatid. Listen, everyone look at this way. Huwag kayong makukonfuse sa John 3.16 sa, uh, sa 1 John 2.15. Okay? In, in, in John chapter 3, in verse number 16, the Bible says, For God so loved the world. And in John chapter 2, 1 John chapter 2, verse number 15, we are commanded not to love the world. Don't be confused. You see, because in John, John chapter 3, in verse number 16, the Bible, John is talking about the people of the world. But in 1 John chapter 2, in verse number 15, John is talking about the system of the world. All right, did you get that? All right, now, here's what the Bible says. Binigay sa atin ni, ni John din kung ano ang ibig sabihin, ang rason kung bakit hindi po dapat natin mahalin ang mundo. O yung sistema ng mundo. O yung mga bagay na nandito sa mundo. Alright? Notice what the Bible says here. For, that, for all that is in the world, the last of the flesh and the last of the eyes. And what else? The pride of life is not of the Father. You see that? Your lasting, the lasting of your eyes, the lasting of your flesh that makes pride na ginagawa na isang bagay, mga patid, ay, ay, ay uh, 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 ginagawa nating pride, na, nagiging proud po tayo doon. You understand? Let me, let me tell you something. Anong accomplishment natin dito, mga patid, na halos pinagmamalaki natin na hindi na natin iwanan at para bang mas mataas na siya kaysa sa Diyos na parang tinatangkilik natin, sinasabi natin na it's because of me. So, you are making yourself bigger than God. You see, the understand that is what the world is doing to individuals. You see, it doesn't matter whether you're a Christian or you're not a Christian. You see, 
Now, maging you are educated or uneducated, wag natin sabihin mga patid, na yung mga professional lamang at mga, mga may pinag-aralan lamang ang delikado sa pride. Do you understand? Na maging yung mga sasabihin natin, hindi nakaapak ng eskwelahan, eh matitindi rin huwag magkaroon ng pride. You see? Now, lahat po tayo kapatid ay delikado pagdating sa pride. Sapagkat kung anumang meron tayo, anumang nilast, anumang ginusto ng atin pong flesh, alright, na nakuha po natin at anumang ginusto ng ating mata, hindi tayo titigil hanggat hindi po natin nakukuha yan. At pag nakuha na po natin yan, gusto ko ng ganito, gusto ko ng ganito, and then we make pride of it. And so we are so proud na, na meron tayong ganyan, na na-acquired natin yung gusto natin. Ngayon, we all have this. And we forgot God. Nakalimutan na natin na meron palang siyang Diyos na lumikha po sa atin. You see that? So, ang sabi ni Paul, this is the very thing that highly exalting us above God. You see? That is in 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Di po ba binasa po natin yan? And so here is the Apostle Paul. The Apostle Paul said, cast it down. That is your, in your imagination. Why? Because your imagination now became a stronghold of Satan. You see that? Well, what do you mean by the stronghold? You see, Satan now is getting a hold of you very strong. That you cannot get out from it. It's so hard for you to get out from it. Listen, you cannot get out from pride by pride. You see, you cannot get out from pride by having a bunch of or big amount of money. Or there is nothing in this world that can put away pride from you why? because it is something spiritual and not carnal it is something spiritual and not material you see listen uh, yung pride kapatid ay nabuo sa pag acquire natin ng last you see it might be material all right. Now here, here's the thing. Saan nagsimula ang pride? Imagination. Gusto ko na ganito. Saan nagsimula yan? Last. Gusto ko na ganito. Gusto ko ng pera. Malaking pera. Nagkaroon, nagkaroon ka ng malaking pera. All right. That's the last of the flesh. Gusto ko na ganito. Malaking bahay. Malaking uh, sakyan. Malaking uh, ganitong lugar. Last of the eyes. See that? Now, do you understand kung kanino sino lamang makakasundo mo dyan? I need to bring you back to the Garden of Eden. Sino ang nakasundo ni Eva, mga kapatid, nung siya nagkaroon ng last of the eyes? Sino ang nakasundo niya nung nagkaroon siya ng last of the flesh? Walang iba kundi si Satan. Everything na ginawa po nila doon kapatid sa Garden of Eden ay labag sa Diyos. You see? So the tree of life speaks of the tree of the life or lives of the righteous people. That's the tree of life. You see? Pero hindi na naging tree of life tuloy. You see, hindi na pinanggalingan among righteous people. But unrighteous people. You see that? That is what pride can do. All right. So here is the apostle now. Sabi Paul, okay, I laid down the foundation. Inilagay ko na yung pundasyon. Walang iba kundi ang Diyos. Walang iba kundi ang Panginoong Heso Kristo. Siya ang pundasyon. All right. Pero yung pagtatayo dyan, nasa iyo ng kamayan. Kung paano mo itatayo, nasa iyo na yan. Kung ano ang iyong itatayo, nasa iyo na yan. Pero wag ka magalala. May darating na fire, may darating na problema, may darating na mga bagay sa ibabaw ng lupang ito. Yun ang magsasabi sa iyo kung ano ang itinayo mo. You see that? So now, malalaman mo ngayon kung yan ay itinayo mo sa pamagitan ng pagmamalaki mo. 
at yung mga bagay na ipinagmamalaki mo, masusubukan niya pag dumaan na yung fire. Alright? So sabi ni Paul, be careful. Be careful. Kapatid, alam niyo, ang nakakalungkot ngayon, marami best yun na narinig ito, pero nais ko sabihin ulit sa inyo mga kapatid. Maraming mga tao ngayon na nag-aasawa na walang ka-idea patungkol sa pag-aasawa. Ni wala nga ho silang kaisipang tungkol sa pamilya. You see that? So ang, 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 ang akin pong sinasaysay sa inyo ngayon, ang aking pinamamanhig sa inyo ngayon, ang aking inilalatag sa inyo ngayon ay ang pundasyon sa pamilya. Anong inilalagay po natin dyan? Now, here's the, here's the thing that's very important na huwag niyo dapang, dapat mga kapatid, eh, kakalimutan. Are you building in that foundation that the Apostle Paul laid and he said, God is the foundation. Are you building a stronghold of God or a stronghold of Satan? Listen, kapatid, sa mga tatay ng tahanan, ang tanong ko po, nagbibuild ba kayo ng stronghold ng Diyos? Listen, many times in the Old Testament, aside from David, but many times maririnig niyo po yan kay David, God is my strong tower and my stronghold. See that? So in other words, a stronghold, kapatid, in a general idea, is a protection. Alright? A protection. Napaganda. Sabi ni David, God is my refuge and my stronghold. See? So a stronghold, kapatid, could be your protection, fathers, could be the protection of your wife, and your children, and could be the protection of the whole family. Yeah. See that? But listen, the only fear for that stronghold is when the enemy is the one who is in the stronghold. Dapat kapag may stronghold, pag may kalaban, doon ka pupunta. Protectado ka. Pero paano ka makakapunta doon mga kapatid at paano ka mapoprotekta ng stronghold mo kung ang nasa stronghold mo ay kalaban? So now, the protection became a threat. So what is now? Why do we have troubles in the home? Why do we have threat in the home? Because the stronghold is not God is not for God. So ang binil po natin sa ating tahanan, kapatid, ay hindi po Diyos. Hindi po para sa stronghold ng Diyos. Do you understand? Sabi ng Biblia rito, kapatid, imaginations. Things that are exalting ourselves rather than exalting God. Oh boy, I like this. Things that are exalting God, that, that, that are exalting yourself and at the same time, insulting God. Did you get that? Is that clear? Mga bagay sa sarili po natin na nag exalt sa sarili natin at nag insult sa Diyos. Bakit na insulto po ang Diyos? Kasi, ang pakiramdam natin ay mas malaki tayo at mas strong tayo at mas, mas matibay tayo sa kaysa Diyos. Bakit? Hindi tayo nagtitiwala sa pamamaraan ng Diyos pagdating sa pagpapalaki ng ating mga anak. Kapag sinabi ng Biblia, wag mong ihiwalay ang pamalo sa iyong anak at sasabihin mo, ay hindi po pwede yan. Hindi, hindi ganyan sa aking pamilya. Ibig sabihin, mas magaling ka pa sa Diyos. 
Sino nagsabi niyan? Si Solomon na pinigyan ng Diyos ng wisdom. It has been approved by God. What you can read in the Old Testament, you can still read in the New Testament. In other words, wala hong nagbago. You see, if you can find in the Old Testament, the Bible says, children, obey your parents. If you can find in the Old Testament, uh, uh, children, love your parents. Respect your parents. If you can still find it in the New Testament, kapatid, sino tayo ngayon na magsasabing, ay sa akin, hindi ko ginagawa yan. Alam mo kami sa bahay, para lang kami magkakabarkada. But I hope you understand the saying, kapatid. Are you trying to insult God to what He said? And trying to exalt yourself? Nakalimutan na po ba natin ang sabi ng Biblia, pride go with before destruction. You see? So why are families being destroyed? Because of pride. We make pride and we are so proud of what we are learning from this world where God said, love not the world, neither the things that are of the world. Because if any man loves the word, the love of the Father is not in him. Because the, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of God. Kapatid, nauunawaan niyo na po ba kung ang lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and pride of life is in your home, then you are trying to find God in the home. Paano mo, mahi, paano mo makikita ang Diyos sa tahanan mo kung nandoon yung last of the eyes? Ano yun? Pagalingan ng gadget? Pahainan ng gadget sa loob ng tahanan. Sa sobrang galing, doon ka na nagsisimba. Nakalimutan mo na ang templo ng Diyos. Nakalimutan mo na, you know, alam niyo kapatid, Mula po rito, binigyan tayo ng Diyos ng wisdom. That's it. That's the wisdom of God. Okay? Now, eto ngayon, tulong sa atin ng Diyos. Binigyan tayo ng wisdom ng Diyos. Para yung mga nasa mamalayo, may mga kapansanan na hindi makakapunta rito, may mga sakit, hindi makakapunta rito, nasa destinasyon, sa malayo, nasa bundok, makaka-attend pa rin sila ng service. That is wisdom. Alright? Pero kapatid, if you take pride of your gadget, di, ma, di mo alam kung anong magkano ito at kung ano itong gadget kong ito. Na kahit ngayon nasa loob kayo ng simbahan, hindi kayo mapalagay sa kahi scroll Kapatid, you understand that saying? Naunawaan nyo na kung anong ibig sabihin po nito? It became a stronghold of Satan in your home. What is that now? Do you understand, kapatid, na ang stronghold is also a storage? Oh, listen, listen, listen. Hindi ko po opinion, kapatid. Let's try to take a look at what we have just read. Let's take a look to what the Bible says here. All right? Look in chapter 10 and verse number number 5. Casting down what? Imaginations. What is that? Where is that imagination that is in your mind? That is your mind. Yung atin pong imagination, kapatid, yung ating kaisipan ngayon ay storage po yan. Pero ano po ang inilalagay po natin sa ating storage? Na hindi po natin namamalayan, kapatid. Yan ay yung ginagawang stronghold ng jablo. Do you understand? Now, sabi ko nga kanina sa inyo, kapatid, kailangan natin ng strong leadership sa mga churches upang mapanatili 
natin ang simbahang kinaruroonan natin at sinisimbahan po natin mga patid ay simbahan ng Diyos at hindi ng tao and just for the sake of association and fellowship. Now, bakit? Do you understand, kapatid, na ang miyembro ay pwedeng mag-influence siya sa pastor? There are so many churches today that cannot preach immorality because members are giving a lot, big amount of money in spite sa kanya kasalanan ng immorality. In other words, naglalagay. Nag, nagbibigay ng malaking pera sa simbahan para hindi atakihin yung kanyang kasalanan. Kapatid, kapag ka ang pastor na kinig dyan, siya na rin, eh, itong isang miyembro na ito, meron na ho siyang tinatawag na stronghold ng jablo. Bakit? Abay, iningatan niya yung kanyang immoralidad. Pinabura ng pastor, eh di lalo na nagrabing, yung pastor naman naging stronghold na. So do you understand, kapag ka ang pastor ngayon ay hindi na nagpipreach laban sa kasalanan, the church now will become a stronghold of Satan. So you understand kung gaano katindi ito mga kapatid. Now listen, why is our family is being destroyed? Because of pride. Paano na buo po yung pride kapatid? Nag-exalt tayo, we take pride. We take pride of our lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes. You see, ano mang naka, nakamal po natin, ano mang nakuha natin, pinagmalaki na natin sa Diyos. Tandaan po natin na ang lahat ng mga bagay na ito, lahat po ito ay nangyayari unti-unti. Hanggang sa maging stronghold na ng Diablo. Now, do you understand? Kaya nga po, nakaka, nakakalungkot. Kapag ka ang mga magulang ay babaguhin po ninyo ang sistema sa loob ng simbahang ito dahilan sa emosyon ninyo sa inyong mga anak. At kayo namang mga anak, imagine kapatid, naunawahan niyo mga kapatid, na kung during the service, kayong mag-boyfriend, girlfriend, naka-holding hands niya, na wala kayong ibang iniisip, kundi habang nandiyan kayo sa upuan, nag-uusap-usap kayo, pero pagka mag-asawa na kayo, hindi na kayo nag-uusap. I'm telling you, ilan sa mga mag-asawa ngayon na buwanan na mag-usap, pero sila may boyfriend, girlfriend, halos kahit na may nag-uusap sa kanila, kiusap sa kanila, hindi na sila nakikinig. Kahit na sa preaching, hindi sila nakikinig. Bakit? Usap, 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 usap. Your emotion now became the stronghold of Satan. Parents, I hope you're listening to me. Yeah, ilang mga magulang na ngayon ang halos hindi nagpapakita sa simbahang ito dahil lang sa problema ng kanilang mga anak. Ilang mga anak na ngayon ang nag-backslide dahil lang sa kanilang emotion. You see, yung emotion ng anak, pinabura ng emotion ng, uh, ng, ng nanay o ng tatay, ngayon na sana po sila ngayon. Wala ng simbahan. Now, the other sena, kung paano po gibain ng jablo ang tahanan? I hope this message is clear, kapatid. I'm just laying the foundation of the series of messages that I'm going to preach to you every Sunday. Brethren, listen. God is the foundation. But my question is this. How do you build in that foundation? How do you build your life in it? Are you willing to submit? Bakit sabi ko nga sa inyo, napakahirap. Listen now, listen now. Ang sabi ng Biblia, napakahirap. Sabi ng Biblia, uh, uh, wives submit yourselves to your own husband. Bakit napakahirap tayong sumunod? Bakit napakahirap natin pagkatiwalaan ng Diyos pagdating na doon sa mga bagay na yon? Pagdating sa pag-aasawa, ang bilis natin. Pero pagdating sa patakaran ng pamilya na ginagawa ng Diyos, napakahirap na. Parang hindi na tayo nagtitiwala sa Diyos. Magtitiwala na tayo sa sarili nating kapakanan. At pagka meron ka na, oh, tinan mo, Ay, di, ano, tumahimik din siya. You're taking pride of what you have done. Beware. Beware. Kasi bahala, baka isang araw, kapatid, 
babagsak na ang tahanan mo. Do you understand kung anong ginagawa po natin sa tahanan ito? We are, sa, sa, sa simbahang ito, ginagawa po natin strong ang individuals para meron po tayong strong family. A strong church ay meron pong strong family. A strong church is composed and consistent of a strong family. Without a strong family, there's no strong church. Strong church will never exist. Kapag ang pamilya po, kapatid, ay hindi strong. At ang pamilya, ang strong family, ay hindi rin po mag-exist kung walang strong na individuals. Kapatid, you understand here? Hindi ho natin alam. Grabe na pala ang hold ng Diablo sa atin. Ngayon, it's time. You see that? Now listen. Listen. Sabi ko nga sa inyo kanina, mga patid, para magapi tayo ng kaaway, yung stronghold natin ay kunin ang Diablo. Let me ask you a question. Ilan sa mga naririnig niyo minsahe dito ang ginagamit niyo sa bahay niyo? O pinatutukan niyo lamang sa ibon at iniiwanan niyo pag alis niyo rito? If the truth be told, kapatid, ilan sa matatagal nang nandito, mga kapatid, na may hawak-hawak pa tayong opinion ng tao kaysa katuruan ng Diyos. Kaya madali po tayo mag eh. Parehas lamang yung wisdom natin eh. Kapag ka ang wisdom mo ay parehas lamang, yung taktika mo ay parehas lamang ng mundo, madali ka makuha ng jablo. Parehas lamang eh. So ang problema natin ngayon kapatid, ay mas madali nating i-adapt yung ways ng mundo sapagkat ayaw nating makantsawa na tayo nagsusolo. Yan ang problema ho mga kapatid. That's why Jesus said, John said, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. All right? Now, I like the strategy of, of uh, Joshua and the rest of the Israelites. Nung ginapipo nila ang Jericho. You understand that? All right. Now, do you understand, kapatid, na wala silang ginamit, kapatid, ng mga carnal na bagay. I mean, I'm talking about weapons. Have you seen, kapatid, in the Bible, have you read it in the Bible, na sila ay nagpaula ng sibat, pana, bato, o apoy, para pabagsakin yung wall of Jericho? No, there's nothing. Only, they what? March. How many times? Seven times. Paikot-ikot, kapatid. Do you understand? Yung yung stronghold ng kaaway ay pinaikutan nila ng magandang pamamaraan, spiritual na bagay. Here's the thing. Yung karnal na stronghold, pinaligiran nila ng spiritual na bagay. Do you understand? Inuulit ko po. Walang carnal weapons na kaya magpabagsak ng spiritual weapon. Pero merong spiritual weapon na kaya magpabagsakin ng carnal weapon. Now do you understand? Here's, here's the thing kapatid. Here's what I'm saying. Sabi ni Paul dito, kapatid, look at this. Let's go back to chapter 10 of the book of 2 Corinthians. All right? Casting down imaginations in every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Now, kung kayo, kung, 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 kung kayo ang nasa kalagayan, mga kapatid, kung kayo ang nasa kalagayan ng walang sound, kung kayo ang nasa kalagayan, mga kapatid, nila Joshua and the rest of them, ikutan nyo lamang yung wall 
ng seven times. Pambira, ang taas po nun, kapatid. It's a fortified, not forty-five, fortified, pinatibay na city, kapatid. Seven, seven rounds. Iikutan mo. And honestly, tao ka, titignan, paano ba pagsak ito? Iikot lang kami dito ng pito. Paano ba pagsak ito? Tapos magagapi na namin ang kalaban. And notice what the Bible says, when they did it, sila sila mismo nagpatayan sa loob. Hindi nila kinakailangan pumatay ng kalaban kasi yung mismo kalaban nila nagpapatayan ng kanika nila. Now here's what the Bible says here. It's very clear. Bringing everything into captivity to, ob- to the obedience of Christ. Notice here. No, tatandaan niyo. Sabi ko sa inyo, guguhitan niyo yun eh. Look, look, look what the Bible says here. Alright? And bringing into captivity every thought. What is that thing? Do you think, kapatid, na si, na si, 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 si Joshua and the rest of them ay hindi po sila maatakihin sa kalang isipan, mga kapatid, ng negative thought? Ano kaya kung inatake at sinunod nila yung thought nila, yung nasa mind nila, nasa imagination nila, hasabihin nila, hindi ko ma-imagine kung paano babagsak ang wall na ito, iikot lang kami rito ng pito. Pito. Ako nga, dalawa palang ilo na ako eh. Pito, Jericho, ang, 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 do you understand? So that's a negative thought, kapatid. Pero sabi ni Paul, ilagay mo yung thought na yun, yung negative thought mo na yan, into captivity. Under the obedience of Christ. Alright? Yung negative na yan, gawin mo. Sundin mo lamang kung ang sabi ng Panginoon. Oh, do you understand what I'm saying? Kapatid, here's the thing, which is, alam naman po nating tama. Pero ang nakakapagtaka lang, bakit ang hirap nating sumunod ng tama? At sasabihin natin, napakahirap unawain. Kung negative, kung hindi tama, madaling unawain. Pero bakit pagkatama, napakahirap unawain? At pagkamahirap unawain, sabi natin, hindi ko susundin yan. Pero alam niyo kung sabi ng Biblia, maliwanag lang, ipahuli mo yan sa Diyos. Let God take a hold of your negative thought. Your evil imaginations. Hayaan mo, pahawakan mo yan sa Diyos. At pag nahawakan niya sa Diyos, ang magiging malaya, kapatid, ay yung positive thought mo. At pag kayo nang gumalaw ng malaya, nandun ang panalo ninyo. Do you understand? Kapatid, ilang pamilya po ngayon ang nasisira sapagkat ang malayang nakakagalaw sa buong tahanan po natin ay yung negative thought ng mga asawang babae. Uh, this is this is not just for for ladies for for wives kapatid sapagkat ilan din sa mga kalalakihan mga tatay leader ng tahanan ang meron din kayong negative thought sa inyong pamilya do you understand what is punishing your family your negative thought the bible says bring them into captivity let god take a hold of it or Satan will take a hold of your thought, of your mind. At kapag kahawak na ng jablo ang iyong isipan, do you understand kung bakit may ganyang kaklaseng kaisipan ngayon? Do you understand kung anong ginagawa nito sa'yo? Mas maraming beses ka nakaharap dito kaysa asawa mo. Kaya ngayon, eto ngayon, hinuhuli ngayon yung mind mo. Nasisilo na ngayon yung kaisipan mo rito. And so, hahanapin mo na magkakaroon ka ng last of the flesh. Hahanapin mo na sa labas, samantalang nandyan lang sa loob ng tahanan mo. Nandyan si misis mo, nandyan si asawa mo lalaki. 
Pero hanapin mo sa labas. Bakit? Because you are already captured by this. So you understand now? And it's sad like what I've said. Marami nagmamalaki na hinahangaan siya. Alam mo, kahit ako ganito, pero maraming bilib sa akin. Iba na. Iba na. You listen to me, stupid. I mean, beloved. If you take pride of what you have, and that's the time that you are exalting, exalting Christ, exalting yourself more than God. And at the same time, you are insulting God because sa isip mo, mas iniisip mo, mas malaki ang magagawa mo kaysa Diyos. Now listen to me. Here's, here's what I'm saying. Para magapi mo yan, you do the same. Pastor, iikutan ko ba yung sarili ko? Paano mangyayari yun? Kayo naman o. Oh. Grabe naman. Sobrang talino mo. Paikutan mo ang sarili mo ng mga spiritual na tao. Pastor, ang ibig mo sabihin, tatawagin ko si Rafi, tatayo ako rito, paikutan ko dyan si Rafi. Alam mo, bago ka nakapag-isip ng ganyan, nireveal na sa akin yung kalukuhan na yan ng Diyos. Very simple. Where there is multitudes of talk to me if you can. There is. There is your safety. Alam mo na may problema ka. Alam mo ginawa. Tinambakan ka na ng jablo dyan. Anong nasa isipan mo ngayon? Mas marami kang negative na kaisipan kaysa positive. Mas maraming laman ang isip mo ng pera kaysa salita ng Diyos. Mas maraming karunungan ng mundo ang utak mo kaysa karunungan ng Diyos. It's time for you to get up and get your Bible. Get up and go to the house of God and listen to the man of God preaching the word of God. That's all you need. That's all you need. Surround yourself with spiritual people that will pull down your wicked, evil imaginations. Kaya ganun na nangyayari. Lahat na lamang na tao sususpecha natin. Pag may nag-iipon-ipon, tino mo, tino mo, ako na naman pinag-uusapan yan. Tinamo, 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 tinamo. Tinamo, nakatingin sa akin. Ako na naman, ako naman sinusutsot niyan. Kapatid, it's time. It's time. Pull down the stronghold of Satan in your life. Listen now. Here's the thing. Kapatid, 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 hindi yan makakatulong pag dumating ang problema sa buhay mo. Pull it down. I said, pull it down. Pag nagkaroon ka ng problema sa buhay mo, hindi makakatulong yung negative thought mo, kundi yan, yan ang magpaparusa sa'yo. Alam mo ang ibig sabihin ng anger? Ha? Huh? It's a punishment sa iyong sarili na ginawa, na, 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 na kasalanan na ginawa ng iba. Akalain mo ikaw nagtitake ng punishment pero ang nagkasala iba. That is anger. Brethren, you've got to be careful. You've got to be careful. It's time to get up and pull down the stronghold of Satan in your family. Check it out. Check it out. Ano yung, ano yung stronghold kaya ng jablo sa amin? Sipin nyo, sino mo may negative thought Punta kayo rito sa Bible. Sino may wicked imaginations dito? Sino? Listen, tandaan nyo kapatid. Huwag nyong pahintulutan ang jablo na gawing storage ang isipan ninyo. Huwag nyong pahintulutan na dapat sana ang Diyos ang nadyadyan sa inyong stronghold. Sana Diyos ang iyong stronghold. Kapatid, listen now. 
every obedience that you take, every time you obey God, every time you trust his word, you are building a stronghold of God. And when times of trouble comes, I promise you, you have your own refuge. You can say with David, yes, God is my refuge in times of trouble. But you cannot say that kung ang binild mo sarili mo is negative thoughts, evil imagination, and you're allowing them to capture your mind. And before you know it, may stronghold ka na ng Jablo. Grabe na ang hold sa'yo ng Jablo. So ano kailangan kailangan mo gawin ngayon? Surround yourself with people who believes here. Did you lost your trust in God? Remember this, kapatid. Tandaan niyo po. Pag sinabi ng Biblia, Husbands, love your wives. Go ahead and love your wife. I said, go ahead and love your wife. It doesn't matter who they are. Because God loves you when you were yet sinners. Tandaan niyo po yan. Pero kapatid, wives, submit. Unto your own husbands. It doesn't matter who they are. Submission is not inferior. It doesn't mean that you're inferior. Pagdating sa, tandaan niyo ito, mga patid, parehas lamang tayo, nilikha ng Diyos, na meron tayong equal value sa harapan ng Diyos. Wala ho tayo magagawa. Yan ang sistema ng Diyos that you have to submit. Brethren, trust God. With his word. Faith is taking God at his word. Take his word. Believe it. And live it. That's where the, the, where the blessing is. Diyan mo makikita yung pagpapala ng Diyos. Kaya, kaya, kaya sa ngayon kapatid, isipin po natin ngayon. Anong binibuild natin? Nandiyan yung pundasyon. Nandito na kayo simbahan na ito mga kapatid. Maraming beses na kayo nakapakinig ng salita ng Diyos. Ang diniklara ko po sa inyo ay Diyos. Ang pinapakilala ko po sa inyo ang Diyos. Ang ipinipreach ko sa inyo ay salita ng Diyos. Nandiyan na yung pundasyon. Tanong, paano mo ngayon ibibuild ang buhay mo sa pundasyon na yan? Will you still disobey God or obey God? Why don't you bring all these negative thoughts into captivity? And obey God. That's the only way that you can get out from it. Remember, foundation is very important and building in that foundation is important too. Kapag hindi ka dyan nagtayo sa pundasyon na yun na maayos, kapatid, ang nakakalungkot, nagtatayo ka lang ng stronghold ng Jablo. And something about the end of sad na maraming mga tatay ngayon, maraming mga magulang ngayon, nagtatayo kayo ng stronghold ng Jablo sa tahanan ninyo. Para sa pamilya ninyo. Akala nyo, pinuprotektahan ninyo, anak ninyo? No. Kapatid, hindi ko, hindi ko, hindi ko maubos isipin kung paano nagagalit ang mga magulang sa simbahan na nagpuprotekta ng, 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 ng integridad ng kanilang mga anak. Tapos sasabihin nyo, napakahigpit. Napakahigpit. Kasi gusto natin paluwagan na sila'y makita natin sila dyan sa mall na nagahawakan ng kamay. Gusto natin makita eh, na ginagawa nilang gawain ng mag-asawa bagamat hindi pa sila mag-asawa. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Is that what you want, parents? For your children? We're losing our integrity. And do you understand why we are losing our integrity? Because we're taking pride of the last of our of the last of our the last of our eyes and the last of our flesh. Meron pa tayo ipagmamalaki yung last of the eyes pa. Meron tayo ipagmamalaki yung last of the flesh pa. Wow. Kakaiba ka yung nilalang. Kapatid, nandi dito na ang simbahan na nakikip ng pundasyon na nagsasabing all right. Mag-ingat ka sa pagtayo mo dyan. You, have, you already have the good foundation. 
But how do you build your life in it? Huh? So fathers, you're silent now. Paano kayo nagtatayo sa pundasyon na yan? Mothers, huh? mga konsentidorang magulang, nanay, paano kayo nagtatayo ng buhay ng anak ninyo sa pundasyon na inilagay ng Diyos para sa inyo? Again, paikutan natin kapatid ng counsel, good counsel, godly counsel ang ating pamilya. And that's the only th- time na masasabi natin, yes, mayroong ako stronghold ng Diyos at hindi ng Diablo. Akalain mo, again, if you will not take heed to this message, kapatid, if you will not abide in this, huh, your stronghold will become the stronghold of the enemy. And it should be the protection. It should be the protection for your family, but it will become a threat to your family because of how you build the, found, the, the, the building or the lives of your children in that foundation. Am I clear to you? Kapatid, sana hindi threat. Hindi sana threat ang stronghold mo sa bahay. Sinasabi ko uli, magiging threat yung stronghold na yon kung kalaban ang nandudoon. Pero kung Diyos ang nandudoon, it will become your protection and refuge in times of trouble. Shall we all stand please? Father, thank you for your words. Bless the lives of your people this morning, oh God. Ang nakita niyo po, O oh Diyos, nawa po ang bawat pamilya ngayon ay makipag-usap po sa inyo sa sama-sama po, O oh Diyos. Sama-sama nilang kausapin po kayo. At amin pong tignan kung anong klaseng buhay ang binibuild po namin doon sa pundasyon na binild ng Diyos. Binild ni Paul, binild ng inyong man. Oh God, please, help us to realize how we build our lives in that foundation that is being laid for us. Bless your people as they come. Your heads are bowed, your eyes are closed. God is speaking to your hearts with that message. Then let's come to the throne of God this morning. Let's talk to God. Salamat po kami sa ginawa niyo po sa aming kalagitnaan. Salamat sa mga anak niyo po na tiklop tuhod na lumapit po sa inyo. O Diyos, pagpalain niyo po ang bawat anak niyo ngayon. Patuloy po kayong manguna, O Diyos, sa anumang kaisipan namin na siya pong magbibigay papuri po sa inyo. Huwag niyo pong pentulutan ng jablo yung makagawa ng stronghold sa aming kaisipan. Huwag niyo pong pentulutan ng aming kaisipan 
ay gawing stronghold ng Diablo by developing negative thoughts in our minds. Oh God, please, forbid him. Bless your people, oh God, at anumang nilapit po nila sa inyo, pakinggan niyo po, oh Diyos. Kailangan po namin ang inyong tulong. Wala po kami. Kayo po ang aming strong tower. Kayo po nakakakita ng lahat ng mga hindi po namin nakikita. And you are also a refuge. In times of trouble, wala na po kami ibang tatakbuhan. In when, the, when, when, when enemy attacks us, you are our stronghold. Bless your people. In Jesus' name, Amen. Alright, thank you. Back to your seats, please. Well, I hope you got something from that message this morning. Amen. 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 Alright. Did you get something? Amen. Alright, para po sa aming mga bisita, ayaw po namin na umalis kayo rito na wala po kami binabahagi po sa inyo. Kaya ngayong umaga po ay uh, lalapitan po kayo para malapitan